Look who's joining us in this review. Who could that be? Looks familiar. Hey everybody, Ash here with 10 Cents. Today I'm going over with you the top 10 most popular men's fragrances of all time. Now I know what you're thinking. How did you determine the top 10 most popular men's fragrances of all time? Did you go through every single fragrance ever released and see how many each one of those sold? No, that's pretty much impossible. I actually did try to do that for a number of the most popular men's fragrances out there. I tried to search and see how many bottles each had sold, only to find out that Really, most of that information is not made public, at least not in an easily searchable format. From what I found, technically, Aqua de Jo is the number one most selling fragrance of all time, at least from what Google told me. But most of the other fragrances, I couldn't find any information on. So I had to do this a different way. And we'll talk about that in a second. But let's go ahead and jump into this. The top 10 most popular men's fragrances of all time. Now just a little clarification here. These are the top 10 most popular men's fragrances, so this does not include unisex fragrances. These have to specifically be marketed only to men. And these 10 fragrances are actually ranked the way they are from Fragrantica. So these are the top 10 most popular men's fragrances according to that website. Now when I had originally thought of doing this, it was actually a year ago or so. And when I first thought about it, I was going to do it based off of FragranceNet. So the top 10 most popular men's fragrances that are being sold on FragranceNet. The ones that sell the most often. And I may still do that video in the future, but for now we're focusing in on Fragrantica. And one last thing, there's no distinction here between niche and designer fragrances, they're all lumped together. Number 10 is a Chanel, it is Allure Homme Sport. This fragrance was released back in 2004. Some of the notes include orange, sea notes, aldehydes, and tonka. And this smells similar to a Versace fragrance that came out after this one, Versace Pour Homme. Versace Pour Homme was released in 2008, so if you agree that this and Versace Pour Homme smell very similar, know that this one came first. Though a Versace Pour Homme is much more affordable. Allure Homme Sport is a great warm weather, people pleasing, mass appealing fragrance, very, very easy to wear in high heat and in most any situation. Probably one of the reasons that it's ranked so highly, that versatility. This fragrance was a flanker of the original Allure Homme and it spawned some flankers of its own. The most popular of which is probably Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme. Maybe a little bit surprising to me that it made the top 10 of the most popular fragrances of all time, but either way, it's a really solid fragrance and you'll probably have a hard time finding somebody that dislikes this one. It's gonna take us to number nine. It is a Jean-Paul Gaultier, which means you probably already know what it is. It's the only Jean-Paul Gaultier on this list. It is the original Le Mal. Vanilla, lavender, and mint are some of the notes here. This one was released back in 1995. So that makes Le Mal the second oldest fragrance on this list. And this is really the fragrance that got Francis Kirkshawn started off. It really made him blow up. And now, of course, Francis Kirkshawn has his own house, Maison Francis Kirkshawn. This is one of those fragrances, like a couple others on this list, that has been worn to death by people over the years. The problem with that, you know, so many people wearing this, is that if you were wearing this and maybe you had a new girlfriend, there's a good chance that you possibly smell like her ex-boyfriend. When this fragrance was in its heyday, it was everywhere. And Lamal is another fragrance that has spawned countless flankers. I mean, tons. You have summer editions, you have floral editions, you have ultra mall, which is really the iteration that gets talked about most nowadays. But this is an OG compliment getter and a club banger from back in the 90s. One thing about that fragrance, there is another fragrance, Cuba Gold, which is a clone of Le Mal. Now there will be people out there, probably in the comments of this video, that say Cuba Gold actually came first. And that's because if you look on Parfumo.net and a couple other websites where Cuba, the company, provided the information that's listed on the website, Cuba claims that Cuba Gold was released in 1979, which would mean that Cuba Gold came out a full 16 years before Le Mal. Now I spent quite a while trying to look into this. And I have been able to find nothing that actually substantiates that Cuba Gold was released in 79, other than just them themselves saying, hey guys, this was released in 79, trust us. Which really isn't something you should just automatically believe. Cuba is a well-known clone house. Everybody knows that. I don't want to get into this too much here because there are eight more fragrances to go. But from everything that I can see, Cuba Gold is a clone of Lamal 
And no, it did not come out in 1979, despite what they may have said. If anybody can find a 1979 vintage bottle of Cuba Gold and present it though, I'll change my mind. Problem with that is, they don't exist. Realistically, Cuba Gold probably came out in the late 90s and was a copy of them all. Uh, but then, in order to try to give themselves some clout, they said it was released in 79. Enough of that, on to the next one. Number eight is a fragrance that I've featured on this channel multiple times. Pretty much anybody that has a fragrance channel has mentioned this multiple times, or one of its iterations. One of the best date night fragrances of all time. Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Toilette. Eau de Toilette! Nowadays, the version of this fragrance that gets talked about the most is probably the Eau de Parfum. We also did have the release of the one Grey recently, which some people liked and other people did not like. But the fragrance that started all of the one line is this one. Amber, tobacco, ginger, and cardamom are some of the main notes in this fragrance. And it was released back in 2008. The knock on the one Eau de Toilette specifically has to deal with its performance. Longevity is not great, projection is soft. But it smells freaking great to me. And I know there are people out there that will hate on this fragrance. I've seen it in Facebook groups, but I really don't care. It smells awesome. And I've gotten tons and tons of compliments with this fragrance over the years. It's warm, it's sweet, it's seductive, and it draws people into you. And nowadays at discounters, you can pick this fragrance up for a good price. I honestly, at this point, don't even care a bit about the performance of this fragrance. I've come to accept it. This is a fragrance back in 2008, 2009, when I smelled this for the first time. It blew me away, knocked my socks off. A full decade later, I can still remember the first time smelling that. It was just immediate. I had to have it. So it's no surprise to me that this made the list. Number eight, Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Toilette. And number seven is another fragrance that was just huge huge when it was released. This fragrance came out in 96. And in 2003, when I was working at an arcade at my local mall, this was still the biggest fragrance around. Everyone was wearing it. And that was a full seven years after it was released. It is this one, Aqua de Jo by Giorgio Armani. This has about every citrus you could think of. It's got lemon, lime, bergamot, and orange. It has sea notes and jasmine. This is an aquatic white floral citrus fragrance that is just people pleasing to the max. It is about as inoffensive as you could get. And when I smell this, it really brings me back to my early teenage to late teenage years because I wore a little bit too much of this, if I'm being honest. But it legitimately got me insane compliments. And I know it's dated at this point. I mean, it's 22 years old now, which is a crazy thing to think, actually. We're going on 23 years old now. But in its prime, Aqua de Jo was the undisputed fragrance king, which meant it was everywhere. So if you were a guy who didn't like this, you were kind of out of luck. And that has spawned countless flankers as well. Aqua de Jo Blue Edition, Aqua de Jo Ascenza, Aqua de Jo Profumo, Aqua de Jo Profumo Special Blend, and I'm sure there will be more flankers to come for that one. So number seven, Aqua de Jo. It's gonna take us to number six on this list. It is the only niche fragrance that made the list, which means you probably already know what it is. It is a Creed fragrance. It is the fragrance that lots of guys call the king of men's fragrances, Aventus. Aventus was released in 2010, and if you're lucky enough to have a 2010 or 2011 batch of this fragrance nowadays, you're looking at over $1,000 worth of value because those batches are highly, highly sought after. Most of you already know the notes to this one, pineapple, birch, black currant, musk. Some people will say that this is a more attractive fragrance to men than it is women, but I do get consistent compliments from women when wearing this fragrance. One issue with the Ventus that I wanna bring up really quickly is some of the modern batches, uh, especially 2018, are not so good. People have complained about them, said that they're watered down, they're not as powerful as they used to be. I did order two more modern batches, 17 and 18. Now I'm not wearing Aventus through the whole year, but I'm gonna figure out a way to test these, maybe use my wife as a guinea pig, and see if they really are lower quality than what the earlier, you know, 2015 batches were. If we're talking retail prices, this is the most expensive fragrance on this entire list, and it's really not close. Number six, Creed Aventus. It's gonna take us to number five. This is the second Chanel on the list. Uh, really not a surprise to me at all. Probably won't surprise you either. It is Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette. And this fragrance was also released in 2010, just like Aventus. Grapefruit, incense, ginger, lemon, and mint are some of the notes here. I've said it before, this fragrance is 
basically the fragrance that really helped kickstart that whole blue wave that we had of fragrances. You know, the things like Sauvage, Versace Dylan Blue, and Mr. Burberry, among many, many others that came after the success of Blue de Chanel. This is basically ultimate versatility in a bottle. You can wear Blue de Chanel basically anywhere, anytime, and it will work. It's basically a fragrance that a guy can buy, have something that smells classy, have something that smells very mass appealing, and wear every single day in any situation and know that people are going to like the way they smell. Blue de Chanel excels at that more than almost any fragrance that's ever been released. And that explains its massive popularity. Blue de Chanel is a super solid release and it's another one that you would be very hard pressed to find someone that smells it and says, oh, that doesn't smell good. Absolute worst that you'll get from that is maybe somebody that says they've smelled that before. And that would be because of the popularity. Number five, Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette. It's gonna take us to number four. This is a Christian D Dior fragrance, actually the only Dior on the entire list, which is maybe a little bit surprising. This one though, total classic, Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette. This fragrance was released in 1988, making it the oldest fragrance on this list. Leather, violet, nutmeg, vetiver, some of the notes. And this fragrance is most well known for its opening where it has a petrol or gasoline smell. It's very, very masculine and some guys just don't go for that. They say, oh, if I wanted to smell like gasoline, I would just douse myself in gasoline. Now I want to tell you guys, it doesn't smell exactly like gasoline. It's not like you've doused yourself in gas, as some people have said, but the violet leaf here does give off a, a petrol tinged kind of vibe, which personally I love, which is why I have a vintage bottle of Fahrenheit because it has an amped up petrol accord in the opening. And that's a fragrance that stays masculine the whole way through. Obviously with notes like leather and vetiver, you know that it's not going to be a weak fragrance. Now there was a time, I believe in 2016, where there was a reformulation of Fahrenheit where the petrol feeling was toned down and the vanilla was amped way up. And people did not like that. There was a lot of kickback on that reformulation. From what I've read, the more recent 2018 bottles of Fahrenheit have dialed that vanilla back down and amped the violet slash petrol back up. Now I don't have a 2018 bottle, so I can't tell you for sure, that's just what I've read. Either way, Dior Fahrenheit is an absolute classic, so it makes sense that it's in the top 10 most popular men's fragrances. All right, we have made it into the top three. And I have to tell you that number three is the biggest surprise to me on the entire list. I wouldn't have even had it in the top 10, if you ask me, let alone the top three. And honestly, I think this speaks more to the Fragrantica user base than anything else. And this is nothing against the user base, I'm just saying their taste may be a little bit different than what I would think of as the top 10 most popular of all time. Regardless, number three is Lalique Ancre Noir. This scent was released in 2006, and some of the notes include vetiver, cypress, and cashmere wood. Ancre Noir to me is a fragrance that's going to be more popular with people that are really, really into fragrances. Maybe not as much with your everyday person, and that's why it surprised me. Now, to be certain, the fragrance Ancre Noir is super, super high quality, especially for the price. You can pick that up for next to nothing at discounters but it is not the easiest wear in this list. Ancre Noir is a very dark, rich vetiver, very earthy. It smells fantastic. I love it. So I don't care that it's in the top three. It's just a lot of you out there, especially newer guys, this may not be your thing. It does have a very strong similarity to Chanel Sycamore. I do have a bottle of Sycamore. I've had it for quite a while now, and there is a legitimate, very close similarity between the two. Sycamore is basically just a, a more expensive, more refined version of Ancre Noir, but Ancre Noir at what you can get it nowadays, 20 to $25, I think, is an absolute steal. And if this fragrance ever got discontinued, bottle prices would skyrocket once it's sold out at discounters. Quality on this one is undeniable. Lalique Ancre Noir, number three. Number two is a fragrance that also came out in 2006, like I just said, and it also has vetiver as one of the main notes. The only fragrance on this list from Hermes, it is Terre d'Hermes Eau de Toilette. The main notes here are orange, vetiver, and pepper. And I have to tell you, these bottles are very, very strong. I have a 200 ml bottle of this, as well as this 50 milliliter size bottle. I actually dropped this bottle here onto concrete from about five, five and a half feet up, straight down onto concrete. And guess how much damage it did? Yep, that much, right there on the corner, right here. Obviously I should have been more careful with the bottle, but this thing is hella tough. 
This is a fragrance that is a little bit divisive. Most people really like it, but there are a number of people uh, that really can't stand it. It does have a very earthy, kind of bitter orange scent profile with big doses of vetiver. Very gentlemanly, very sophisticated, very classy. Terre d'Hermes is a fragrance that can easily be worn dressed up or to the office. And depending on how you're dressing and where you're going, it could be a great date night fragrance as well. Not really a surprise for me that this one is so high up on the list. Uh, I would have maybe thought a couple of these others would have been placed above it, but Terre d'Hermes being in the top 10 makes absolute sense to me. And that's gonna take us to the number one most popular fragrance. And really, when you sit down and think about it, it shouldn't be much of a surprise. It is Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de Lone. This one came out in 2009. Cardamom, lavender, and cedar, some of the main notes. And we all know why this is the number one most popular men's fragrance. It is because Jeremy fragrance uh, used to really sing the praises of this one as a sexy date night compliment getting beast. Now to be completely fair, even before Jeremy Fragrance hyped this one up, it was in the top 10. It was a popular fragrance. It's always been a popular men's fragrance. That just really gave it the extra boost to get it to number one. There's been a lot of talk about reformulation with this fragrance, how the original batches were much stronger, deeper, richer, more powerful. And for a while there, when the hype train for Lana Wheat alone was in full swing, vintage bottles of this were going for hundreds of dollars. Eventually, sanity kind of came back into the fold, people calmed down, and those vintage prices dropped. Now, a vintage bottle of Lana Wee Delome is still gonna run you more than a current bottle will, a uh, current formulation bottle, but the prices aren't as crazy as they used to be. Now, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, there's no point in buying a vintage bottle, unless you're just a huge collector or a massive fan of Lana Wee Delome. The difference between a vintage bottle and a current bottle is not massive. It is not worth the price difference in my opinion. Not close. I've done blind tests with multiple formulations of Lana Wee Delome and the differences again were minuscule. Are there differences there? Sure. Does it make a huge difference? No. Despite all that though, Lana Wee Delome truly is a great date night fragrance. It is mass appealing, women love it, men love it. The cardamom note in Lana Wee Delome is almost like the de facto cardamom note in fragrances in general. It gets referred back to all the time. If a fragrance has pineapple, people automatically refer to Aventus. If a fragrance has cardamom, people will refer back to Lana Wheat de Lome. Wonderful fragrance, great compliment getter, very versatile, Lana Wheat de Lome. All right guys, that does it. The top 10 most popular men's fragrances according to the users of Fragrantica. I may do one of these in the future with the top 10 unisex fragrances, or I may come up with something completely different. Let me know what you think about this top 10 list in the comments, whether you think it's good or bad. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time.